Okay, welcome to the first part of this PHP tutorial series. Um, oh, that feels weird as well. Maybe I'll call it the second part. Anyway, um, welcome to this part of this tutorial series. Um, in this video, I'm going to briefly explain the directory structure, the database structure, table structure, and um, code as many of the files as I get time for. I'm going to start with the user backend file. Gonna just going to contain three functions and the init file which is going to do some things and then we're going to move on to the pages um, yeah I think this will be fairly short, a fairly short tutorial maybe two more parts including um, yeah two parts including this one so if, uh, let's get on with it then um, this folder that you see here is as usual the one that I had open in my browser in the previous part if I just go to it and hit oh, protected page. If I just go to it and reload it up now, you see these three pages, these two folders, are uh, these four pages. I said three. These four pages. Four. One, two, three, four. And these two folders. I can count, honest. Um anyway, um the core folder we've met before, it contains uh init file and an ink folder. Uh in the ink folder is a user ink file. Um, so yeah, that's fairly standard, we've met that before, um, I'm hoping it's something you're becoming familiar with. Um, the ext folder is a new folder, exciting. Um, this folder, I usually call it ext, it contains, I'm short for extensions, I think I originally thought of. Um, it contains any images, any CSS, or any JavaScript that is used by the website, sort of client-side stuff. The core is back-end only, with a fairly large number of exceptions once we get into larger projects. Anyway, so that's enough about folder structure. Oh, I suppose I should just open it up. Uh, it, at the moment it just contains a single CSS folder, which contains a style.css. We're not going to be mentioning this file at all, in the, this video, all it does is set the width of the labels for the forms. Um, it's, we're not mentioning styling at all in these tutorials so far anyway, it's just PHP. Um, usually in this folder for a large project I would also have a JUSC folder for JavaScript and an image folder for images, but for this there are none of those, so they're deleted. Right. Um, Database. Let's get on with making the database. Uh, I've talked for three minutes about almost nothing. So, uh, I've just deleted the database I had, uh, the table I had, sorry. Um, I've left the database because there's no point creating that again. Uh, I've just called it user system for this video. Uh, and on this database, I'm just going to create a new table called users, like so. And I'm just going to give it three fields because we're making a very simple system. Uh, the first field is going to be a uh, unique identification number. The second field is going to be the user's name, like so, and the final one is going to be their password. The user ID, we're going to set as an int, length is going to be 6, 64, and the index is going to be primary, and we're going to set auto increment. Um, for username, we're going to set the type to varchar, uh, set the length to, let's say, um, 24. 24. Um, uh, we're going to set the index to unique because we want all usernames to be unique. Simple enough. Uh, password has to be a varchar as well. Uh, length 40 because that's how long uh, an SHA1 hash is. Any string that you pass to the SHA1 function will return a 40 character hashed version of the string. So yeah, they're always 40 characters. Makes it quite nice. Actually, we could use char for that. Why not? Um, the only difference between char and varchar, by the way, is that char is not variable length. Um, and if you only use, like, uh, okay, basically the way MySQL works is it sort of stores all of the character type um, information together for the table. It's a terrible explanation, but it's the best way to think of it. So, say if you have all char fields instead of no varchars, no variable length characters no variable length fields, then it makes your database more efficient. Um, but say, having two, having 
uh, one var chart and one chart is not more efficient than having two var charts because it does the calculation in a way that involves all of the fields that are variable sort of in one calculation it's not multiple calculations so say if you didn't mind losing a bit of space because no one's going to have a 24 character username unless they're mad um, you could set this to chart and save a bit of data space efficiency but there you go um, so yeah that's the database structure that we're using I'm just going to hit save see now we have this table that's been created which we're going to use for um, the PHP code just load it up see it has no rows uh, okay so let's move on to the um, what should we do first the users backend file no let's not do that let's do the init file first it's by far the most interesting okay so at the moment you see that if I load a protected page it just says you are logged in as nobody that's because I have removed all of the PHP code from all of these pages. If I just very distra distractingly flip through them all, you see nothing in users backend, nothing in init protected. Uh, it just has these two empty single line PHP tags. You are logged in as nothing. Uh, login has a form. Um, this, which we're going to wrap some PHP around, and this empty block, which is going to do the login. Register, same story. Errors are going to go here. Registration is going to go here. Forms already here. Oh, where was the HTML error? I spent. I'm pretty sure there was a there was a, there was a HTML error. Let's check because uh, that'll annoy me. Let's load. No. Register. Was it login? Okay, maybe there wasn't one. Oh well. Right. <laughs> I'm going mad. Dreaming of HTML syntax errors. Weird. Anyway, yeah. Um, why did I think that? <laughs> right, anyway, back to the, what I was saying. Um, a logout is also a blank PHP page. So, let's get started with init. Um, the first thing this file needs to do um, is set up the PHP session, which I have a basics tutorial on, so if you're not sure what the session is, go back and watch that. Uh, so, we just need to call the session start function what that will do is populate the session array session session array with the um, data that PHP has stored in the session for us um, and at the end of the script it will write any changes to that array to the files or however you store the session okay the next thing we're going to do is get the um, sort of name of the current page and we're going to do this using the server script name variable so if I just, for example, do echo server server array, oops, script name. Oh dear, look at that, terrible. Like so. And actually, I will have to include it in this page. Include core slash init dot ink dot php. If I now reload our protected page. Um, I spelled script name wrong. Sounds about right. So I go back to our init file and spell script name right and reload this. You see the output from the script name variable is this tutorials user system protected. So it's effectively this bit here. Uh, what we want to do is extract protected from this. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to get this last part by using end explode, which I'll explain in a moment and then we're going to remove the last four characters to get rid of .php so what we want to do is first um, use the end function uh, what the end function does is it returns the uh, last element in an array and then we're going to explode what explode does is it sort of splits a string into an array given a character so ah, I've explained this before um, so if you don't know what explode is, go back and watch my other tutorials and I'll explain it there because I don't want to run out of time before I finish this file. Um, so we're going to explode on a forward slash and what we're exploding is that variable like so. So now if I reload this page, you see we just get protected. So now all we need to do is remove this .php which we're going to do using the substring function which I have also explained before. 
Uh, so let's just go back to our code and wrap this in a substruct function. The first parameter is the string you'll want to work with, so that's the result of the end function we just output to the screen. And then the second parameter is the starting uh, position, and the final one is the number of characters you want. Or is it the ending position? I can't remember. Go check. Uh, but it c this can be negative, um, so if you do minus four, it'll take four characters from the end. So if I now reload our page, we should just get protected, which is this here. If uh, if this file was named something else, like say if we went to the login page, this would display login. Well, it wouldn't at the moment because we haven't included the file, but theoretically it would anyway. Um, I suppose I could just I will just briefly explain what the end function does. Not the end function, the explode function. Basically, say if you had a string like um, I am a string. Oh, string is green. Um, if you exploded, actually, uh, let me move that. If you exploded this string on this this character, when I say on, I mean this character is used as the first parameter. So if you exploded, it, if I say you exploded it on this, I mean you do that. So explode this string on this vertical bar character. You'd get this, 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 not without that, and this all in an array returned. So end explode, end explode that would result in just string. So there we go. Uh, so if we, we are going to define this as this page variable now, like so, and what we want to do is check if this is in a list of exceptions, and if it's not, we want to do some sort of login stuff. So let's do that. Um, well, first we'll just define this list of exceptions, which we're just going to call ex exceptions. Yep, exceptions equals array, which creates a new array. It's going to contain two keys, two elements even. Both are going to be strings. Uh, the first one is going to be register, and the second one is going to be login. Just so we don't get prompted for login when we go to try and log in, because that would result in an infinite redirect loop, which we do not want. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do next is check if the user is on a page that's um, not in the exceptions list, and if they are, we're going to, mm, if they're not on one of these two pages, then we're going to check if they're logged in, and if they're not, we're going to send them to the login page. So the way we're going to do that is if in array key, I'm sorry, needle, which is going to be page, not like that page and then the exceptions array I'm going to spell it right except I'm just going to copy it like so uh, so if the page is in the exceptions array uh, that is what that will do an array basically checks if this is in this array if it is it returns true if it's not it returns false so we're going to check that against false because we want to see if they are on a page that requires login, not if they're not. And if they are, we want to do another check, which is if is set underscore session username equals false. Uh, what that check basically does, um, because th we only set the session variable username um, to a value, we only give it a value if um, if the user is logged in, like when the user logs in or when they've finished registering, we set this. So if this isn't set, they can't have logged in. So then we need to redirect them to the uh, login page, which we do using header. As always, oh dear. Right, header location login.php and then we're just going to kill the script after that because we don't want to do the things that we are going to type in here, which is going to be um, very simple MySQL connect server name, server username, and server password. That should be a string, not a variable. What was I thinking? Okay, so I've sort of run out of time, so I'll continue this in the next part of the video. Um, 
hopefully I haven't rushed it too much and hopefully you've learned something so far so join me in the next part and we'll finish this off